3.4. Paul said that an overseer should be a man presiding over his own household in a fine manner, having children in subjection with all seriousness. Here, the expression presiding over obviously includes not only teaching his children, but also taking the lead in the family and having children in subjection. Yes, elders take the lead in the congregation, helping all to be in subjection to Jehovah. Paragraph 13. Question. Why might it take time to reach a decision at an elders meeting? In order to preside well over the flock, the elders discuss among themselves how to address the needs of the congregation. It might be more efficient if one elder made all the decisions, yet, following the example of the first century governing body, modern day bodies of elders discuss matters freely, seeking guidance from the scriptures. Their goal is to apply scriptural principles to the needs of the local congregation. This is most effective when each elder prepares for the elders' meetings, considering the scriptures and the guidelines from the faithful and discreet slave class. Of course, this takes time. When there is a difference of opinion, as occurred when the first century governing body considered the matter of circumcision, extra time and research might be needed to reach a consensus based on the scriptures. Paragraph 14. Question. Do you appreciate that the body of elders work together in unity? Why do you feel that way? What might happen if one elder insists on having his way or tries to promote his own ideas? Or what if someone, like Diotrephes in the first century, sows seeds of discord? The whole congregation will surely suffer. If Satan tried to upset the first century congregation, we can be sure that he wants to disrupt the peace of the congregation today. He might appeal to selfish human tendencies, such as the desire for prominence. Thus, elders need to cultivate humility and work together as a unified body. How we appreciate the humility of the elders who do cooperate as a body. Admonishing You Paragraph 15. Question. What motive do elders have when admonishing a brother or a sister? Paul then highlighted a difficult yet important task of the older men, admonishing the flock. In the Christian Greek scriptures, only Paul used the Greek term translated admonish. It can refer to strong counsel, but does not indicate hostility. For instance, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, I am writing these things not to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. 1 Corinthians 4.14 His motive behind the admonition was loving concern for others. Paragraph 16. Question. Elders do well to keep what in mind when admonishing others? The elders bear in mind the importance of the manner in which they admonish others. They strive to imitate Paul by being kind, loving, and helpful. 1 Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12 reads, In harmony with that, you well know how, as a father does his children, we kept exhorting each one of you, and consoling and bearing witness to you, to the end that you should go on walking worthily of God who is calling you to his kingdom and glory. Of course, the elders hold firmly to the faithful word so that they may be able to exhort by teaching that is healthful. Paragraphs 17 and 18. Question. What should you keep in mind if you receive admonition from an elder? Of course, elders are imperfect and may say things that they later regret. Also, elders know that for spiritual brothers and sisters, receiving counsel is normally not joyous but grievous. So when an elder approaches someone with words of admonition, he likely does so after giving the matter much consideration and praying over it. If you have been admonished, do you appreciate that elder's loving concern? Suppose you had a health problem that seemed medically inexplicable. Then a physician correctly identified the problem, but the diagnosis was rather hard to accept. Would you hold a grudge against that doctor? No. Even if he recommended an operation, you would likely agree to the treatment, believing it to be for your benefit. The way the doctor conveyed the information may have a bearing on your feelings, but would you let that determine your decision? Probably not. 
Likewise, do not allow the way you are admonished to prevent you from listening to those whom Jehovah and Jesus may be using to let you know how you can help or protect yourself spiritually. Appreciate Jehovah's Provision of the Elders Paragraphs 19 and 20 Question How may you show appreciation for the gifts in men? What would you do if you received a gift especially made for you? Would you show your appreciation by using it? The gifts in men are what Jehovah through Jesus Christ has provided for you. One way you can show your gratitude for these gifts is by listening intently to talks given by the elders and by trying to apply the points they bring out. You can also show your appreciation by making meaningful comments at meetings. Support the work in which the elders are taking the lead, such as the field ministry. If you have benefited from counsel you received from a certain elder, why not tell him so? In addition, why not show your appreciation for the elders' families? Remember, for an elder to work hard in the congregation, his family is sacrificing time spent with him. Yes, we have ample reason to show gratitude for the elders who are working hard among us, presiding over us, and admonishing us. These gifts in men are truly a loving provision from Jehovah. After listening to this article, do you recall? What reasons did the Thessalonian Christians have to appreciate those taking the lead among them? How do the elders in your congregation work hard for you? How do you benefit from the elders presiding over you? If given admonition by an elder, what should you keep in mind? End of article.